The ultrasight power armor was developed by the Brotherhood of Steel after the Great War as an attempt to take advantage of the anti-scorched properties of ultrasight. The use of ultrasight as a key material for the armor also allowed for additional armor plating and radiation shielding, at the cost of increased strain on the suit's cooling systems, which led it to be prone to leaking coolant. Primarily developed by the Lost Hills chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel, the schematics to build a prototype were transmitted to the organization's Appalachian chapter by scribe Haley Takano. The schematics were not production ready, requiring Appalachia's scribe Grant McNamara to continue refining the design. Scribe McNamara was eventually able to solve most of the design flaws and believed he had solved the ones involved with the cooling system, but noted he could not be absolutely certain without first building a prototype to test out. However, in the end the Appalachian chapter failed to produce such a prototype due to the difficulty in acquiring necessary components before being wiped out by the scorched. The Lost Hills chapter likewise never produced any of these suits, as the communication satellites failed, preventing further communications, and the ultrasight needed for the suit was a resource unique to the Appalachia area. Before the war, Haley Takano was a prominent scientist and a prolific writer publishing for the Tesla Science Magazine, focusing on cutting-edge research and theories. She survived the Great War in California, and apparently through pure luck, found Roger Maxson and his deserters heading towards Lost Hills. Her scientific background proved invaluable to the fledgling order, especially when the Appalachian chapter of the Brotherhood encountered the Scorch Beasts. Working directly with Grant McNamara, Takano did everything she could to provide the Appalachians with information and data needed to find the threat such as schematics and terminal codes among other things. Perhaps the single most advanced item she delivered were schematics for a modified T-51 power armor using ultrasight. Although the armor was plagued by several problems she couldn't resolve without access to the material. Her most important contribution was twofold. Firstly, she determined that the Scorch Beasts posed an existential threat to humanity, based on their abilities and prodigious breeding rate. Secondly, she helped develop a sonic generator that would attract the Scorch Beasts and allow the Brotherhood to call their numbers, though everyone was aware that this solution was unsustainable in the long run. Takano and her team focused on finding a long-term solution and provided Grant with an automated research program to use at vault Tech University locally so that Appalachia could continue research on finding a weakness in the Scorch Beasts, even if the West Coast went dark. She was also responsible for designing the sonic scanning module, which was eventually used by the Appalachian Brotherhood to track down the source of the Scorch Beasts to the Glassed Cavern although their attempted mission to destroy the Scorch Beasts for good was ultimately unsuccessful. After the Lost Hills Brotherhood lost contact with Appalachia, Takano took on the responsibility of tutoring Odessa Valdez. By 2103, while initially due to join in the Brotherhood First Expeditionary Force, declining health and other concerns made her ineligible, and scribe Odessa Valdez volunteered in her place. One of many survivors in Appalachia, Grant McNamara was originally a nameless refugee before joining up with Taggarty's Thunder. Even though Paladin Taggarty was willing to take a chance on him, most of the Thunder considered him nothing but another mouth to feed. However, he won them over by being useful, cracking the security at the West Tech Research Center and helping the Thunder make sense of the atrocities they discovered there. Grant was stationed at Camp Venture alongside Sergeant Ted Wilson in 2083, and was the one who found Kay Kelly's body after she took her own life. As the Brotherhood grew, Grant continued to contribute his engineering and mechanical skills. He helped restore power at Grafton Dam, impressing Johnny Moreno, and reinforcing Moreno's belief that the Brotherhood needed more civilian members. Moreno's sentiment was not shared by Paladin Taggarty, who had a great distrust of civilians within her squad, a distrust which was not aided by her experiences with Hank Madigan and E. Fisher. Grant was also responsible for turning the old Allegheny Asylum into a building worthy of the name Fort Defiance, installing salvaged military-grade security, including the security laser grid guarding access to the top floor, and creating a fortification plan for the building. His approach to planning rubbed some of his compatriots up the wrong way. However, as exhausting as they found him, they grudgingly admitted that his attention to detail was impressive. 
As one of the few civilians who Paladin Taggarty trusted, Grant worked closely with the top Brotherhood brass on both sides of the continent, including Haley Takano, his personal idol. Although he was intimidated by the arrangement, he did his best to keep up with her. While working with Takano, Grant was responsible for implementing and tweaking the numerous solutions sent to their chapter by Lost Hills, including a sonic generator designed to lure scorch beasts into kill zones, an echolocation module to track their nests, and an automated research program for analyzing their weaknesses using equipment available at Vault Tech University to conduct analysis. Over the course of his work, Grant realized that the only way to destroy the Scorch Beasts was to understand them and come up with a solution. He wanted to cooperate with the responders to run the automated research program around the clock until a solution could be found. Although Paladin Taggarty allowed Grant's operation, program designation 09901, to be run once, the loss of life and the risk of causing the responders to become hostile meant that she was unwilling to repeat the operation, despite Grant's insistence, eventually ordering him to drop the matter. Grant did as he was told, and dutifully manned the communications when Taggarty launched Operation Touchdown in 2095 to track down the source of the Scorch Beast infestation. After losing contact with the detachment and the subsequent earthquake, the Scorch Beasts briefly disappeared. Grant implored Ted Wilson, the new commanding officer of Fort Defiance, to allow 09901 to be run again, to verify that the Scorch Beasts were truly gone. Wilson refused, believing that the lack of Scorch Beasts was proof enough of the mission's success. When the Scorch Beasts resurfaced and it became clear that Operation Touchdown had been a failure, Grant renewed his plea to run 09901. Wilson rejected his request again, telling Grant to focus on keeping the generators at Defiance and Thunder Mountain operational so that the Brotherhood could continue to keep Appalachia safe. As the Scorch Beasts continued to relentlessly attack Fort Defiance and other Brotherhood outposts, Grant worked to prepare the fort for anyone who might follow in the Brotherhood's wake. He was one of, if not the last Brotherhood member to fall defending Fort Defiance from the Scorched, leaving a note begging anyone who found it to succeed where the Brotherhood had failed in wiping out the Scorch Beasts.